1995, there was a murder in East Yorkshire that seemed to be entirely without motive. Margaret Wilson, 66, mother of four, married to a local farmer, has a twin sister two miles away, time of death 3.30 yesterday afternoon, just a stone's throw from her home in Burton Fleming, a totally random attack. Cause of death was two cuts to the throat, now that's not for public release by the way. Now, I don't need to tell you just how important it is we catch this man. We've got descriptions of him and his car. 
Dr. Badcock, the psychologist at Wakefield Prison, will do an offender profile. Do you think it could be a contract killing, sir? On a 66-year-old woman, Mike? Well, the way he knocked her down, there could be an army connection. We're fairly sure the car's a Montego estate. One driver says white, the other white or silver, but if pushed, it'd come down on silver. So which one should we go with, sir? Well, the press have been told white, so let's stay with that for the moment, but uh, just keep an open mind, all right? This knife was found in a hedge near the murder scene. We need to know everything there is to know about it. The black stain on the blade. What is it? How did it get there? It's no fingerprints. I'm 99% sure it's the murder weapon. If you ever wonder why you do this job, just take a look at the photos we've taken of Margaret. Us like this. It's just to let you know how the inquiry's progressing. Go over a couple of things with you. And to see if anything's occurred to you. Any reason why someone might want to kill Margaret. Anything suspicious? Anything at all? We're doing everything we can. Whatever it takes. Do you know when I'll be able to lay my wife to rest, Superintendent? The contact with the family was the point when it really emphasised what we were trying to do. Because at the end of the day, Margaret Wilson was their mother, wife, grandmother. The public in Burton Fleming couldn't understand why it happened. She was tremendously respected in that village. And they were absolutely stunned. This man who had done it was still out there. And the question was, can it happen again? And, and people lived in that area with a real fear for a long, long time. The chill went right through me. It was the way he looked at me. As if he had a great anger inside him. Somehow I felt that he was angry with me. Could you pick him out in an identity parade? I wish I could forget him. Not long after, they came across another witness. We'll call her Marjorie. One who not only seemed to have seen the Montego estate, but said she recollected it in detail. We've been thinking of buying one. That's how I recognised the model. He went past several times, almost prowling. Perhaps I've noticed him. What colour was it? White. Definitely white. And it had a black plastic trim. I think the inside was grey. What about the driver, Marjorie? I don't know. Um, 30 plus, dark haired, clean shaven, or maybe a bit of a stubble. Uh, short sideburns. Oh yes, and he was wearing a green jacket. The wax tie. Have you ever seen him before? Well, we haven't lived here that long, but no, I haven't. More coffee. Keep it up with the paperwork then, Jay. It's all the white Montegos registered in Humberside. on the knife. The forensics can't identify the black stain. Adams, sir, made it. Supply 19 companies in the area. Biggest is McKenzie in Scarborough. You know, pizzas, hot and chips and that. Yep, and they've bought over 1,300 identical knives in the last nine months. <laughs> nice quick job then, isn't it? Right, I want you to all read this. It's the offender profile. He's likely to have a job and use a knife at work, probably in a long-term relationship and living within 25 miles of the murder scene, as we thought he could be an ex-soldier. Oh, to make him feel better about himself, he may have kept a memento of the killing. On day three of the inquiry, there was what some detectives thought a breakthrough. 
but it would take two years before they could really tell this lead was different from all the others. He's going to do it again. So please, if they do know something, please. Because my mother was the most innocent person around. She lived by her family. Lovely lady. Friend of my mum's, you see. It's just unbelievable. That's why I rang. Here it is. Silver Montego Estate, Reg E676, XDT, sold to Derek Christian. 1800 part cash, part check. Right. It's a great help. Pleasure. Back. Would you mind answering a few questions in relation to the murder of Margaret Wilson? No. Not all. So, you work at McCain's? Yeah. My father and I got me the job. And on the day of the murder, you drove back home to Driffield and you got here about quarter to four. Mm. What were you wearing that day? That's him. We'll do whatever we can to help, but there are nearly a thousand people working here, Inspector. Any ex squaddies? Anyone who's not afraid of hard work. These are the workers who clocked off at 3 p.m. that day, and all those who own Multigo Estates. You've got your work cut out. Any of the staff drive home past Burton Fleming? Think of one, Derek Christian. Well, he's got the car. He lives south of the sea, and he clocked off at 3 p.m. He's got no previous. And we've got nothing to link him with it. Yeah. Derek Christian, I think, to a lot of us, he was also at the back of our minds. He wasn't the only one. We had a number of people who were good suspects who could have committed the murder. But the clue we didn't have was something that pointed directly to one individual. What we've got is a knife, but we don't know what it was used for. Then the Montego was to be white or silver. Now we've got fibres from the victim's clothing, they tell us nothing. What we need... a similar knife in his restaurant back in 1987. 
and the knife oh, involved in the murder room. of Margaret Wilson. We'll explain why yeah. in a moment. Hello, the incident room. Mm hmm. Yep. You know what the stain on the knife is, sir? No, but I can find out. I'm a forensic scientist who trained in metallurgy. Uh huh. It's called an analytical scanning electron microscope. Basically, you can build up a fingerprint of the elements present on the knife and in the stain. That's the image there. It's qualitative, not quantitative. It shows what's there, but not how much. Do you follow me? I think so. I can find out how it's been sharpened, what it's been used to cut, even what kind of water it's been washed in. So you can trace it to a particular workplace. Possibly, but it'll take time. The child protection team. You're made for the job, John. But I want to see this one out, sir. I'd like to say yes, but I really don't have any choice. At least let me see the knife project through. Come in. Sir, we've had a call from Marjorie Burt. She says she remembers the wrench number of the Montego. Thanks, Wally. Marjorie was the woman who claimed to have seen a Montego estate prowling round her home. I'll see what I can do. It was after crime watch, you see. And it made me think about the day again. And I remembered the car number. It's in a dream, you see. More coffee? Uh, yes. One sugar, please. grandchildren, any children, she just absolutely loved. She loved the countryside, she had to go for a walk every day to get some fresh air. She thought fresh air um, was the cure for everything. This is Burton Fleming, a mile from the family. Personally, I found it very, very difficult in those early stages having contact with the family because I just didn't know what I could say to them that might be of some comfort. I don't think anything that I could have said would have been. See, that's your rhubarb. Nothing like. Sprout. No. Celery. No. I think you'll find that's the one. Potato. He's made comparisons with 19 companies in the area. Only McCain shows that identical stain. He's also analysed the water to each plant. And it matches the water used at McCain's. Derek Christian works at McCain's. He's not the only employee there, John. I have to consider the defence point of view. Checking out nearly a thousand people, which is what we've got to have to do, is going to take months. Gary Shaw from the crime faculty. I have looked at what you've got. No clear suspect, if anything too many. No previous and no evidence. 
I'd researched Derek Christian in particular. You've identified his links in three ways, locality, workplace, car. So now you can put him in or out of the frame. Get to know him, inside and out. Family, friends, schooling, finances, and attitude to women. We'd been going just under 11 months. Um, we had a number of people who could have committed the murder, who were good suspects, but we still didn't know who it was. And what the crime faculty did was refocus us in a way. What they enabled us to do was to look more closely at Derek Christian, look at areas of Derek Christian that may provide an answer. Sheffield Wednesday, apart from that, I've got nothing against him. Uh, he's, he's all right, he's all right to work with. What's he said anything about his home life? I suppose I'm telling you anything new. He hasn't been getting on with his missus recently. He's moved into his mum and dad's place. He's been playing away with the last from here. So what's the name then? Tell me a bit about your relationship with Derek Christian. We never went out together. I was just friendly like I am with everyone. Maybe you got the wrong idea. I got a bit worried at one point. Yeah. Make him sweat. 
then confront him with evidence proving he's lying, wait for his reaction. BBC Radio Leeds, News Talk Radio for West Yorkshire. Derek Christian, I'm arresting you for the murder of Margaret Wilson. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned anything you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. This interview is being remotely monitored. Are you happy with that? Yes, sir. Right. What I want you to do now is to tell me everything you did that day, from when you got up in the morning until you went to bed at night. Okay? Woke up in the morning, would be six o'clock, got dressed, made a cup of coffee, left the house at quarter past six, taking the cup of coffee with me, stopped off at the paper shop, bought two papers, Daily Mirror, Daily Star, Drove to work, clocked on about quarter to seven, did the various jobs that I do at McCain's, clocked off about five past three, looked at my watch, walked to my car at ten past three, drove on by the twelve forty nine, got in at quarter to four. I knew it was that because I was looking at the clock when I came. I had my tea and sat and watched the television for the rest of the evening. Jane, check out his wife's account. We'll just get back right to the start. The story had obviously gone round and round in his mind for the 14 months, um, and he'd come up with quite a polished version of events, um, a little too polished, really. He believed that that answer would, uh, would satisfy us and he would be able to walk out of the police station. Uh, in fact, it did the exact opposite. You mentioned about Cyprus. Bother you'd been in there. And that was it, as far as bother was concerned, was it? Yes. Does the name Uta Reuter mean anything to you? No. What happened in 1983 when you were in Germany? Were you ever interviewed by the military police? Can't remember. Can't remember? No. Not that I know of. You don't remember going to a nightclub called La Straga? I've been there a few times. And what happened afterward? We were both falling over each other. She asked me to stop, I stopped. The next thing I knew, I was arrested and accused of being raped. Of raping her. Did you assault her in any way? No. Positive about that? Positive. She says in a statement about the incident, Derek had me in his arms when he was talking about his wife. Whilst holding me, he kissed me on the lips. I pushed him away, which made him mad. He started saying things like, all oh, women are slags. That's not me. She says that when you got in the back seat of the car, you wanted to have sex, and she didn't. He didn't take any notice of me, and he started to kiss me again. He forced my head down into his lap, and then ripped the front of my T-shirt open. No, didn't do that. You didn't do that? Can I just ask you something, Derek, at this stage? Yes. You say you never assaulted her? Yes. Is that what you say? Yes. How did her teeth end up loose in the car? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're telling us you're not a violent person. No, I'm not. And yet there are a number of incidents that have happened involving violence against women. Yes. So what we're trying to do is examine the violence in your life. Because from what I can see, you're quite a violent person. Right. What we'd like to do is to swap the tapes here. Okay, Derek. Time's up. Derek, 
Yesterday we spoke about the incident in Cyprus which you told us about. I don't want to discuss that anymore. It's just going over old ground. Rebecca Edwards is one of the military police officers who arrested you. And she tells a very different story. She said there was a prowler in the grounds near the female quarters. No. As I say, no. She seems to think you have a problem with women. She thinks that might have something to do with it. The fact that she was a woman and she was coming to take you away and arrest you. Is that right? No. But I've told you on the tapes already. She says, he directed a tirade of obscenities at the police in general, and female officers in particular. He also began to hammer at the door with a spade. He was threatening to kill me when he was released. Derek, do you remember we were talking about Duke's Park? Yes. And you said you'd never been there after dark. That's correct. Well, I can tell you for a fact, on Thursday the 8th of February, you were in Duke's Park. Uh, no, I wasn't. On Tuesday the 12th of March, you drove round Bridlington, and at 19.48, nearly 10 to 8, you went to Duke's Park. You weren't seen again until 2018. What were you doing? I wasn't there, I told you. It's got no relevance to this case. I've had discussions with Mr. Christian throughout the day, and I think he's been fairly cooperative. In the 11 hours that he's been here, there's been no direct evidence put to him in relation to this offence. I appreciate what you're saying, but if you could just bear with us for a moment. Now, later that evening, you parked up outside an address in Bridlington, and you started to run. You told us you don't run. I don't run. I don't know what you're talking about. You were seen running by police officers. You took long strides in a stiff-legged manner, and as you ran, you took your right hand out of your pocket and began to swing it in a straight arm movement across your body. Now, that description of a person running is quite distinctive, and it also happens to be the same description of the witnesses who have seen the murderer running. Right. You're still saying it wasn't you? Yes, sir. Right, Derek, let's move on, shall we? I'm now going to show you a photograph of police item TT01. I'll give it to your legal representative. This is a photograph of the knife used to murder Mrs. Wilson. Do you recognise that knife? No, I don't. Have you ever seen a knife like that before? No. Never? Not until I was shown a photograph. That knife was examined by experts and traced to the McCain factory where you work. You're telling me that you've never seen that knife or knives like it and you've never, ever possessed one. Is that right? Not till I was shown a photograph. Those knives are used by all the workers at McCain's. Well, I never use them. So you're the only one that hasn't used one of those knives? Yes. We have interviewed all the current staff at McCain. Right. And in every single case, we showed every single person a picture of that knife. And they said those knives were all over the factory. So out of over a thousand people, probably nearer two thousand, you're saying you're the only one... Yes. ...who's not seen that knife? Yes. to do now is show you something. It's police item MEA7 and it was found in your bedroom at your parents house. It's a copy of the whole day email dated the 7th of February. I believe that's your birthday. That's correct. And what does it say on the front of the newspaper? It was in killer. New plea by a twin of star victim. Why have you kept the paper? For the massage parlour in the back. You've told a lot of lies during this series of interviews. And I think the outcome of this interview is that if you listen
listen to everything that we've got to say. The murder of this lady and yourself for the same person. I just fix her. I know, sir. I know it's not me. Circumstantial. We can't charge him. Maybe we'll get something back on the fibers. That's a long shot, John. Come this way. When a man who's strongly suspected of committing a murder walks away from a police station, that is obviously of great concern to us. But very little we can do about it. I would say it's probably the lowest point uh, in my 15 years in the police. Um, it's someone that you're interviewing for the most serious offence there is. Um, and to see that person walk out of a police station knowing that he is the person who's committed the offence, um, you really wonder whether you've done your job properly. So, uh, what are you going to tell them, Derek? Well, it was my father-in-law reminded me. That was the day I moved some line on. I went straight after work. It was when they were moving house over to Driffield. I drove them to Driffield, then I got in the Rover and went down the cash point. Right then. Well, they backed me up. Well, they're ready to come to court and everything. Well, let's get on with it, shall we? When he came back to the police station uh, a number of days uh, after his release, uh, he voluntarily gave us uh, another set of circumstances that occurred uh, on the day of the murder. It gave us something else to look into. Um, an alibi can be explored, and it, it might well rule him out. So that's it then. Yeah. The positive. He was with him that afternoon. If he left work just after three, could he have driven into Scarborough, picked up the line on, and back at the cash point in Driffield just after four? No. No way. Just in case the in-laws made a mistake on the wrong day. Hey, it's Superintendent Corrigan here. I've been trying to get hold of an itemised phone bill. That I've... We've made the proper application. This is a murder inquiry. How can you lose a phone bill? John Curry, Child Protection. All right, thanks for calling me back, sir. Yeah, forensics have just run. We've got a match on the fibers. Yeah. Do you know anything about forensic evidence, Derek? Don't know anything. Well, I'll try and give you a layman's explanation. Everything we've got on is made up of fibers, and every garment has the ability to lose some of those fibers. Okay? Yes. All Mrs. Wilson's clothes were sent to the Forensic Science Lab at Weatherby, and each item was examined to see which fibres had been shed. We found 78 different fibres which match and are identical to fibres from the clothing you were wearing on that day. Can you explain that? No. We also found one fibre from Mrs. Wilson's skirt on your jogging bottoms making 79. Can you explain that? No. Well, one explanation, Derek, is that you were present at the scene. I wasn't, was I? We believe you murdered Margaret Wilson. If you could just tell us why. I told you I didn't do it. I was moving furniture for me in-laws. So, 
charge him. With the forensic evidence, there was enough to go to court. But with Derek Christian's alibi, was there enough to convict him? Thanks, mate. Oh, you don't know how to retrieve lost phone bills, do you? You can. If you were here, I'd kiss you. Just fax it to me. Thanks. made a call from their house at ten past four. They couldn't have been out driving with Christian. It was a different day. Derek's in-laws had made a mistake and his alibi collapsed. But when in November 1997 Derek Christian's trial began, he still held a trump card. His defense called someone who might undermine the prosecution. Marjorie the householder had told the police she'd seen his prowling car when he could prove he was at work. How's it going? Marjorie's just given evidence. She stuck to a story. We could be stuffed. If they believe her, that's three years' work down a pan. Even a quarter of my service. Some people have lost more than that, mate. Having given evidence, Marjorie Burke ran out of the court and broke down. She later admitted her evidence was an invention, and in June 1998 she pleaded guilty to perjury and was sentenced to six months imprisonment. She said she was trying to be helpful. In December 1997, the jury took two hours to find Derek Christian guilty of Margaret Wilson's murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. So far, he's failed in two attempts to appeal against his conviction. The offence itself is uh, a one in a million offence. The fact that it's a totally motiveless crime uh, committed by uh, someone who has got no links whatsoever to the victim is really a detective nightmare. It's the worst offence that probably could be committed and it's the worst to try and detect.